Hey Facebook and YouTube friends, this is Paul Napoli, the Death Scouter, making another financial video for my Death Scouter all one word YouTube channel where of course I will be sharing links to my videos in various Facebook groups for personal finance and investing in savings. Today I am upgrading one of the videos that I did two years ago. It only had one year of historic data. I'm now doing it with three years of historic data as you can see from the screen and we're going to do one of my favorite things to do which is actually put numbers behind the theories and opinions to find out what is truth and what is not truth today we're answering the question if I have a lump sum of money is it better for me to invest it all on day one or should I slowly trickle it into the market using something called DCA or dollar cost averaging. So what is dollar cost averaging? Uh, that is a principle that says in the stock market, which we don't know if it's going to go up or down or how long it'll be up or how long it'll be down, uh, is there a way to simply ensure or assure that I'm buying the most shares possible with my money? And what dollar cost averaging aims to do and how it aims to do it is by buying in with a set dollar amount on a regular interval with total disregard for whether the market is up or down. I'm just going to be a constant regular investor. When the market prices are high, my regular contribution will buy fewer shares at the higher prices and when the market is down then my regular contribution will buy more shares at the lower prices and if you average that out over time at least theoretically then the average cost per share will be down and you are in effect trying to buy or time the market by buying as much as you can at the lower prices and buy as little as necessary at the higher prices. So the real question is, does it work? So let's go ahead and take a look at my super duper Excel worksheet. Let me take this graphic off the screen and here we go. Now I know this looks like an eye chart. I'll walk you through it just two lines and then we'll jump to the summation. You can freeze the video and see the data for yourself but let me tell you that these are real world numbers what i'm using for over 36 months or for 36 months is an idea of one thousand dollars a month dca contribution or a lump sum of thirty six thousand dollars investing in the stock market which is represented by stock symbol voo VOO is an ETF fund that tracks the Standard & Poor 500 index, so that becomes our basis investment. So with just one stock symbol, VOO, you can become an investor in, quote unquote, the stock market. Where do I get my closing prices for this video? I got them from this website. You can go there. So when you see these closing prices and the date of the first trading day of each month now you know where all these numbers come from and you know that i'm not just making this stuff up as part of some hypothetical conversation so you have the opening day of january 4 2021 the closing price for the day of VOO was at $339.03 my standard recurring dollar cost averaging contribution of $1,000 bought me 2.95 shares. And then I will keep a running tally of how many shares. So suddenly you see that all these columns here are not as confusing as you thought they were. Uh, if you take my total number of shares and that month's closing price, you see the monthly account value or you take a look at today's price, today being the day I'm making the video, January 4th, 2024, and midday as the market is still open, the price of VOO was an even $431 per share. So that's where you see the current value 
as of the making of this video. So however many total shares you have at today's price is where this column gets its numbers. So now suddenly it's not as mysterious as you might have thought it was. Let's go ahead and I'll show you the second month just because I want to show you how dollar cost averaging is working. February 1st, 2021, the stock price changed upwards to $345.77 a share. My standard $1,000 monthly contribution did indeed buy me fewer shares this month than the month before. So I was at 2.95, now I'm at 2.892. Add those together and I get my totals and you can see the math just perpetuates its way down the, the columns and the rows, making this no longer a big mystery to decipher. I just did that for you. Now, in the green, what happened? Well, we took our $36,000 lump sum on January 4th, 2021 at a price of $339.03 a share, and it bought us a total of 106.185 shares in VOO. And you see that 106.185 is the total number of shares I will have throughout the entire duration of this exercise. Again, I took the month closing price and just created a monthly price that we could use to track it. Or in the third column, we reference the today price of $431 per share and we have our lump sum current value, which you can see based on one daily price and the same number of shares that this number doesn't change throughout the whole column as this number does not change throughout the whole column. So now that we've taken away the mystery and I've showed you the actual data on a monthly basis, first trading day of each month, closing price as provided by markets.ft.com let's see which methodology was the mo the more beneficial we'll slide in our graph and we see that buying all in on day number one allows us to have maximum shares and the value of those shares basically trends the not basically identically matches and trends the stock market whereas in blue we are constantly incrementing our value by our one thousand dollar monthly purchase and hoping to buy more shares at the lower prices but at no point in the last three years does the blue line ever go above the red line at no point ever in three years does dollar cost averaging meet or exceed the lump sum investor so we have a question to ask at this point is this an anomaly is this just the way the data looked over a small period of time or is there some rhyme and reason as to why the numbers are the numbers? And I will tell you, A, first of all, standard investing stock market disclaimer. Past performance is no guarantee of future results, right? But historically speaking, on a monthly basis, the S&P 500 is up 63% of the time. It's only down 37. So if your dollar cost averaging your way into the market, each month you're buying in, there is a 63% chance that you're buying in at a higher price, which means you're getting fewer and fewer shares. Only on the 37% down months is the program really working for you, but that's a two to one disadvantage against you. So there is some rhyme and reason as to why the numbers are the numbers. 63% of the time on a monthly basis, the S&P is ticking upwards. The stock market is 
always going up, down, up, down, up, down. But as you step away from that graph and you look at it over time, then the market is going upwards on a trend. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down on a daily or hourly basis. But over time, it's trickling upwards. I've heard it described as playing with a yo-yo that's going up and down as you walk up a flight of stairs. And that is an excellent way to visualize the long-term return of the U.S. stock market and specifically the S&P 500. Everyone, I hope this video was of value to you. If not, let me know in the comments section. I would love for you to like and subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. You will find something of value and interest on my channel. I guarantee it. And again, if you have any requests for videos, leave a comment. I'd be happy to make another video and get it published out there to help everybody understand their money and increase their journey towards financial independence. I'm Paul the Death Scouter. Thanks for watching.